Hello again, I'm Sam from Niche Solutions and I'd like to welcome you all to Still Niche episode two. Today I'm filming in the beautiful Phipps NBC Brewery in Northampton. In today's video, we'll be looking closely at three specialty beers brewed with yeasts from Niche Solutions range, the Fermo Vice, the Fermo Yeast AY4, and the Fermo Sour. Yet again, we've treated some lucky Niche Solutions customers to a tasting box containing each of the beers featured. Okay, it's time to catch up with our first brewer. I'll pass you over to Chris from Hoppy Family Brewery. Hi, my name is Chris. Uh, welcome to my home-based Hoppy Family Brewery based in Kettering, uh, North Hampshire. I started as uh, probably every brewer in UK uh, as a home brewer. It was a hobby of mine for a few years. Then in uh, April 2017, I started my own brewery, as I mentioned earlier here at, uh, at home, um, brewing different kinds of beers, uh, different styles, uh, not reinventing the wheel, not trying to come up with completely different, uh, different new beer. Uh, just the styles that I know, that I love to drink, uh, just make them mine uh, with my preferred uh, taste profile and uh, flavors. I uh, would like to introduce you to one of my latest beers, Rye Ale, uh, which is fermented with uh, German Weizen yeast. Uh, many of you probably know are familiar with German Weizen beers. They have really nice uh, banana uh, taste profile, banana uh, clove. Uh, it's really nice, deep flavor uh, to them. They're usually very hazy. Uh, they have a very strong uh, aroma, uh, and that's what I that's what I really loved about uh, those beers since the beginning uh, when I first started drinking them in ages ago. Uh, traditionally, the Weizen beer, as the name said, the Weizen is in German for, uh, for wheat. They're made with uh, wheat malt. And I was always wondering how would it taste like to have a Weizen style beer made with rye instead of wheat? Because rye has a really nice uh, nuttiness, uh, has a nice flavor of uh, toasted bread. Uh, gives a little bit of sweetness uh, to the beer uh, and here's the example of what you can achieve uh, combining these two elements. I brewed this beer with uh, Fermo Vice supplied by these solutions. It's a really great uh, yeast in my opinion. I tried different uh, different uh, providers uh, of wheat of wheat beer, uh, Weizen beer uh, yeast. Uh, but trust me, this one has proper Weizen beer uh, taste uh, uh, profile. Uh, so let's give it a try, shall we? As it is in German tradition with Weizen beers, before the end of pouring, you should swirl the what's level left in the bottle and then pour it into a glass. As you can see, there's a nice, decent head. There's a nice pale in color. It's a little bit hazy, which I like a lot flavor, very Weizen-ish, very typical for German Weizen beers. Taste is very refreshing. It's uh, about 5% uh, strong beer, 5.5%. Uh, it doesn't taste this strong, uh, but it's really refreshing. It's really easy to drink. Uh, really nice body, nice flavor. I 
the first beer that I brewed. Oh, my firstborn was uh, the beer that I called Hellberry. Uh, it's a chili ale with addition of uh, tons of uh, blueberries and raspberries. And as I was researching uh, how to make this beer, how to add chilies to the beer, what chilies to add, um, I found a local grower uh, 20 miles from, from, my, from my place uh, who was the only grower in the world of uh, Commodore Dragon chilies. Next, uh, I want to try Imperial Stout, a strong one, uh, but I want to try to make it entirely with uh, Polish hops uh, to make it sort of Imperial Polish Stout. We'll see how it goes. Um, thinking about taste profile of uh, Black Forest uh, cheesecake. Uh, so yeah, so that's on on my brewing plan for the next two or three weeks. A shout out to those of you who are artists or know any artists. Um, if you would like to contact me uh, to create a next label for, for this beer, uh, there's an email. Uh, on my website uh, www.hfbrewery.com uh, Also, I have a promotion uh, if you contact me by email uh, with, the, with your ideas on how to name this beer and by end of this year I will announce who's the winner and, and this person will be rewarded by a four pack of this beer. Cheers! Thanks for that, Chris. Now, I have to say, while I was talking to Chris prior to lockdown and he was tasting the beer, I could smell the aromas wafting across the room and I was dying to try it. And I can tell you, having now tried the beer, uh, it's very well balanced. The aromas and the flavor of the beer pay off nicely. Now, I'll pass you over to Andy from Wonsom, who's the head brewer. He's gonna to talk to you about his Baltic Porter. Hi, my name's Andy. I'm the head brewer here at Watson Brewery. Uh, Watson Brewery is based just outside of Canterbury in Kent. It's been producing beer now since 2009. I've been with the brewery since 2017. Uh, Watson Brewery is pretty much well known for its traditional owls, so more like best bitters, pale owls, um, porters, stouts, and we even do a mild as well. Uh, recently we've started to branch into more modern craft style beers, so we're doing unfined hazy IPAs, uh, putting some of our beers in cans and doing some fruited beers as well. Um, but we're here today to talk about our Baltic style porter, uh, which really has been adapted from a, an Imperial Russian stout. Um, so basically the idea is that we wanted a beer that was more sessionable for people. Um, but still retain a lot of the uh, full-on flavour that you and complex flavour that you get from a, a Baltic style porter. So traditionally Watson Brewery has tried to name its beers after local historical events. So this particular beer, Black Pig, uh, right here, we've, um, we've named after the, the tarred shipwrecks that washed up on the, uh, the Kent shores down in Deal uh, that were sunk by the, the English fleet and the weather back in the 1500s. So the malt bill for this, uh, this beer is obviously pal malt as the, as the base malt and then we have a, a generous amount of crystal malt in there to, uh, to give it a nice caramelly flavour and a nice sweetness to the beer. Uh, and then we, we back that up with a balance of chocolate and black malt uh, which just helps give that rich chocolatiness to the beer as well as a, a slight smokiness in the background as well. So we chose to use Niche's AY4 yeast for this beer because um, it's a nice classic English owl yeast. It, it, uh, it leaves the beer really nice and clean. Uh, it adds a nice smoothness to the beer. It ferments really, really quickly. It attenuates really well. And we find that it, it leaves a fantastic balance of hop and maltiness in there that just gives it a, a nice rounded edge to the beer. And we're, we're really happy with the product since we've started using it about probably about six months to a year ago now, I think we moved over to using the, uh, the AY4 yeast and, um, and it's just uh, never looked back since really. Okay, so let's try the, the Black Pig. So it, it comes in a tall uh, 500 mil brown bottle with a black bottle cap. Nice hiss there from the, um, 
carbonation, so off we go. So just pouring it into the glass, holding it up to the light. You can see it's got a very nice red hue in the background there, and it's nice dark in colour. So you're just getting enough light coming through to give it a nice red twinge in the light, but dark enough that it's definitely a porter. So. Yep, so when I smell that, I get a nice, nice chocolatey flavour on the nose and you can tell that there's some, some caramel notes in there as well. So let's give it a go. And yeah, immediately when you taste it, you get that little bit of smokiness there from the dark malt, followed by some rich chocolate almost instantly after that and then lingering in the background is a nice caramelly sweet flavour so it's just a, a very nice sweet smooth beer to drink it's not too strong but it gives you that that same complexity that you would get from an imperial russian stout or porter but without well without the whack in the face from the abv so yeah cheers uh, so our next beer that we'll be brewing will probably be five gold grains which is our christmas beer and uh, as you might have guessed from the name it uses five different different malts. I think there's some uh, torrified maize going in there, torrified wheat, uh, there'll be some flaked oats going in there, there'll be cara malt going in there. I think also a bit of uh, Milano as well as uh, using Maris Otter as the base malt and uh, we also add a bit of orange peel into the mash just to give it a nice festive feel to it. So leading up to Christmas that'll be our next beer we're brewing. Uh, the best way to enjoy this beer, I would say, is maybe with uh, some slow, slow cooked pulled pork, maybe, um, or some sort of barbecue style meals. There's actually a few people that have come to the tap room and have bought this beer, and they say they they buy it specifically to put in their slow cooker with their their pulled pork. So uh, it's a great beer that you can use to to, to brew uh, to to make a, a pulled pork or even a, a casserole with. I would say, oh god. Uh, some of our funny brewing stories will probably be, I mean, my brews are always perfect, but we've, we've got a, a lovely guy called Torgard who works in the brewery and, and you, you never know what's gonna happen when he's brewing. And uh, I think sometime, uh, one of the things I remember greatly is when um, he forgot to put the hot plate down in the kettle. So he had to, he was literally draining the whole lot and, uh, and it just felt heartbreaking to watch, but at the same time, very amusing because he was keeping so cool about it, even though he knew it was gonna have to waste a whole batch of beer, but it happens to the best of us, really. So uh, if, you're, if you're interested in any of our beers, uh, we've got an online web shop. COVID has given us the opportunity to actually launch our on online web shop that we've wanted to launch for a while. So all of our bottle range is available on there. You can also purchase mini kegs and also follow us on social media. We've got Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all of them are connected. And whenever we've got any updates, they go straight on there. Uh, you can find out what's happening on, around the brewery. You can see what latest beers we're brewing, what seasonals are coming. And thanks for watching, guys, and uh, to stay safe, and uh, hope to, to see you all soon. Cheers. Thank you very much Andy. Yet again the aromas play a really big part in this beer. The adapted recipe makes it very refreshing yet still very much a porter. On to our third and final beer. I'm going to pass you over to Andrew at Three Hills Brewing who's made a mixed fermentation sour using some very forward thinking techniques. Hi I'm Andy from Three Hills Brewing. Um, I'm the founder and one of the brewers here. Um, I started brewing back in 2014 out of my apartment in Shanghai. Uh, I had one full room full of fermenters and about four beers on tap, more craft beer than most of the bars there. Uh, and a load of professional brewers tried my beer and recommended me for a job. Um, that's, I trained to be a brewer in, a, in the German brewery, making lagers, wheat beers and dunkels. Um, but I really wanted to get back to my home brewing roots. So I came back to England and set up the brewery in my garage uh, of the family home in Northamptonshire. Um, that was in 2017. Since then we've grown to a team of four um, and we've got a second site in Bermondsey on the Bermondsey Beer Mile. We brew loads of different stuff, loads of experimental stuff, 
uh, Imperial Stouts, Barrel Aged, uh, Nipers, Dippers, Saisons, Wheat Beers. We like to do a bit of everything and we've never really lost the uh, interest in experimentation. Uh, there's just so many things you can do, so many ingredients you can use and we're never satisfied. We always want to improve as well. So uh, it's a great way uh, to improve is to try new things and, uh, and yeah, uh, on a path of consistent improvement. Um, so we brewed a beer with uh, Niche Solutions Fermo Sour. Uh, it's a really good way to make a fast turnaround sour. Um, because we're a small brewery, we brew up to seven days a week, twice a day, sometimes three times a day. Um, so we never had the time to make uh, kettle soured or sour mash. Uh, it just tied up the brew house for too long. So Fermo Sour, you pitch it into the fermenter direct. Um, you let it sour the beer down to about 3.2 um, or whatever your desired uh, acidity is. And then you pitch another yeast which finishes off the fermentation. So we pitched a neutral American yeast strain uh, because we wanted a clean sour base for the yuzu, which we later added into the fermenter. Um, so this is the beer, Forbidden Fruit Yuzu, fruited sour. Uh, let's crack it open and see what it tastes like. So it pours nice, golden, with a big white head, which is great for uh, sour beers. Head retention is not, sour beers not known for their head retention, but with Fermo Sour, you get a good head retention. Um, so aroma, the aroma is like super zesty, citrusy. Um, there's a little bit of malt character in there, which is quite nice as well. Um, we'll give it a taste. Yeah, so it's like super refreshing, crisp, um, zingy, zesty, everything you want in like a, a nice uh, sour beer. Uh, that's the Fermo Sour just gone down. We'll put that back up there. Fermo Sour, Nice Solutions. It's good stuff. Well, we're pretty eclectic here. So uh, we listen to loads of different stuff. Uh, funk, soul, uh, heavy metal. We found that uh, faster electronic music is pretty good to can to. Um, depends, if the sun's shining we might play some reggae, uh, if it's really bad weather, thunder and lightning, we often do the Lord of the Rings, uh, the whole uh, theme uh, movie soundtrack. Yeah, so we do pretty much everything, um, yeah, apart from like pop. Probably we did a collaboration with uh, the Emperor's Brewery and we had a stuck mash and it was a total disaster. So that was pretty memorable. Uh, in terms of like good days, um, we've done, pro I reckon the first Nipa we ever did. That was pretty memorable. Um, yeah, we got some new tanks uh, that allowed us to brew that style uh, a lot better. And um, yeah, the, the day of tasting it out of the tank, that was pretty special. Okay, thanks for watching guys. Uh, you can find this beer in all good bottle shops um, and very soon on our online shop, which we'll be launching in December. Um, cheers. Thank you very much, Andrew. This really is an absolute fruit bomb. The aromas, the flavors are fantastic, but it's really well balanced with the sour flavors in there too, produced by the lactic acid producing yeast. Um, Thank you very much to all our brewers today, uh, to Chris, to Andy, to Andrew, for sharing their expertise and for taking the time to talk to us. I hope that you can go out and try these beers somewhere. If you're watching this and would like to be featured in one of our videos, having had great results with a Niche Solutions product, please get in contact with us. We'd love to hear from you.